Thank you very much for coming. Um, we have 15 minutes to talk about something which I would like to spend 15 weeks or years talking about, or not so much information. Um, a new uh, front-end technology uh, announced at Open World and at Java 1 last year by Oracle. It's called Oracle Jet, which stands for Oracle JavaScript Extension Toolkit. It turns out that for the last three years or so, internally within Oracle, different organizations have been exploring the possibilities of JavaScript in the enterprise space. And out of those explorations, um, a, a set of standards have emerged within Oracle. And these, and this approach does not replace anything at all. Um, we've been going around to a lot of Oracle offices and Oracle partners and talking about this, uh, this new development. Um, and we're telling everybody this doesn't replace anything. Uh, it's just an additional uh, additional uh, instrument, additional um, uh, a tool in your toolbox, um, and I want to talk about this. And the best thing about all of this is this is an open source story. This is possibly the first um, organically developed open source story from within Oracle. And I'm uh, very um, happy to be involved in this uh, project. I'm, I'm one of the product managers. I'm going to quickly, in the few minutes we have, walk through the basic ideas and hopefully do a small demo as well. So, um, what's this all about? It's all about the cloud. Oracle is all about the cloud. If you're at Open World um, last year, if you uh, read anything about Oracle, every second word, word that you read about Oracle is cloud. What is cloud? Cloud is data. Data is in the cloud, but you need to do something interesting with it. You need to present it, visualize it, let users manipulate it, correct demonstrations uh, about cloud services. You need to do all kinds of application-like things. You need to create visualizations, you need to create Something in the browser. Everyone wants to be in the browser nowadays. Um, browser on the desktop, browser on devices, browser on mobile phones, browser on iPad, whatever. That's where you want to be. And JavaScript is the language of the browser, so Oracle wants a place there as well. Um, these kinds of charts and graphs and, and whatnots are the kinds of things that um, you would want to have um, in these kinds of applications to visualize various kinds of data. And this is, um, it, a very brief summary, this is basically what JET is. JET is a set of jQuery UI components um, on top of a set of open source libraries that are being used to this day and over the past three years um, in various applications being created um, by Oracle. So within Oracle, um, there, is a, a, there are a number of customers of JET, of the JavaScript extension toolkit already in all kinds of different parts of Oracle, Internet of Things, mobile cloud service, developer cloud service, all these different kinds of cloud services all need some kind of application to visualize data and they're all doing this, or increasingly people are doing this with JET. In the past, they would do these kinds of things with ADF, which is kind of heavy, you know, JSF-based, and even more stuff on top of JSF, Application Development Framework. Um, a lot of people, of course, for many valid reasons, don't like it. One of them being, it takes months and months before you're comfortable with it, whereas if you hire a new developer today, they know about JavaScript, they can immediately start creating these kinds of applications using JET. So, brings many benefits for um, different kinds of developments within Oracle. And so within Oracle, many people are very happy with this, many organizations, so massive organization, of course, many different groups, um, departments, all creating, um, all wanting to be part of the whole move to, to the cloud and services and etc. So if there's a visualization cloud service where they're very happy with this. Um, Solaris, there's a, a monitoring uh, application in the browser, which is created in JET and um, and they all kind of look like this. None of these are massive applications. These are not uh, air traffic control systems. These are pretty simple, small to medium type uh, enterprise applications that need to visualize data, give some management perspective on what's going on within a particular system. Um, and that's what JET is perfect for. Um, so here are some, some examples of these kinds of applications. And um, taking a step back when deciding on what kinds of uh, libraries and, and so on you want to use within a, a JavaScript type application, um, things become very uh, complicated very quickly because there are so many choices and the choices you make turn out tomorrow to have been wrong or were wrong, yes, uh, were right yesterday but wrong today because those libraries come and go. And very nice thing about the innovation in the space is that somebody can create a new library today, throw it over the wall um, and you start using it and in the meantime they're working on a whole different library and doing something completely different and when things go wrong with the thing they created three weeks ago they say, well, sorry, I'm doing something different now. So it's a, it's a completely unstable space, as we all know. Grunt, you know, everyone excited about Grunt a couple of years ago, and then there's Gulp, and if you're using Gulp, you're wrong, because there's also Brunch. Apparently, Brunch is now the new Gulp. So this kind of ecosystem is 
interesting, innovative, but uh, chaos, uh, really chaos. And, and I'm sure we, we all feel the pain of that. Um, at the same time, it's, you know, people with coming, as I do, from the Java background, it's a very interesting uh, landscape to be involved in, um, something that's constantly changing instead of, you know, every few years or, or whatever, getting uh, some new API or updates to Java. Every other week, there's a new framework or a new solution or a new technology out there. Very interesting space. Um, however, um, you know, obviously, all over the web, you have all these different ways of categorizing. Everyone's categorizing these libraries and trying to compare them with each other, Angular versus Knockout versus Backbone versus this versus that. And people say, no, you can't compare apples to pears on Angular. You can't compare to this. And you, these are all different. And very, very, very difficult uh, situation that we are, we're in, especially if you want to create something larger, something that's going to be reliable, that's going to be maintained for, for many years to come, something that you're not going to throw away in a, in, you know, in a couple of weeks, um, but something real. So from Oracle's point of view, the first point is, of course, looking at requirements. So for Oracle applications being created for mobile cloud service and IoT cloud service and whatever, First step, you know, look at uh, responsive design because you want your application to, to be able to change, uh, to change resolution as you change screen size. You want the application to be modular. You want uh, for maintainability and for clean organization. You want to create single page applications. You don't want to navigate from one page to the other. You want everything simple uh, focused on, on the browser on one single page. Accessibility, <coughs> incredibly important. Accessibility is incredibly important, um, um, you know, uh, for hard of hearing and, and uh, sight um, hearing problems, all kinds of um, requirements and rules and specifications for that. An Oracle application can't go out there without meeting um, accessibility requirements. Internationalization, security, performance, to the extent that there are standards conformance to those, documentation, very importantly support. Can you call um, the provider of your library or framework at three in the morning and say, hey, it's not working, please help? You know. And uh, this, since this whole Oracle Jet story is part of the Oracle ecosystem, um, we've been training the internal support staff to answer questions at three in the morning um, about problems people might be having with this um, particular solution. The building blocks of the solution are, first of all, require a knockout. And you see, um, when you get to the demo, that there's nothing new here. You don't need to learn anything new. It's based on existing open source libraries. It's not a, it's not a library itself. It's not jet.js. It's not a framework. It doesn't give you everything and says, uh, say, this is what you're going to work with. It, it gives you a modular system based on require for, for the modularity and on knockout for the two-way data binding. If you, were to, if you are familiar with knockout and require and were to imagine them in one application, so a require application with require modules and define modules and with knockout built in, you have pretty much the entire idea of what JET is about. Um, okay, so Oracle Jet itself, Oracle JavaScript Extension Toolkit, um, based on these libraries, um, first of all, Hammer for uh, touch on devices, require for modularity, knockout for two-way data binding, jQuery UI for the components, and once uh, web components and Polymer becomes more stable, we'll move to those uh, specifications. jQuery and Jet, which, are, which is a long list of components. Now, normally at this point, I would do some demos to introduce you to require and to introduce you to knockout before going into JET. Um, but uh, since we have like minus whatever minutes, um, the, the short story is it's aimed at medium to advanced JavaScript developers. It's uh, based on <coughs> open source libraries. It's really focused on data visualization, on letting people quickly put together applications, cutting and pasting from a cookbook, which I'll show you. It's enterprise ready, it, accessibility, modularity, these kinds of concerns are built in. It's in, in the first place, once it was announced at Open World last year, it was focused on Oracle Cloud customers. And very soon, you'd be surprised how soon it will be on GitHub. All of it will be on GitHub. You can check it out, you can contribute to it, and become part of the community. There's a community that's being developed around it. There's a Facebook and a Twitter and a YouTube and all those kinds of things, and blogs and, um, and everything that you can imagine for a community. So, demos. Um, if you go to the Oracle Jet site, which is oraclejet.org, exists today, it existed since uh, Open World last year. Click on the, uh, first look on the first page, you look down to the bottom, you see these are the libraries that are part of this solution. Um, you click on the Get Started link and you end up on this page and it tells you these are the three steps for getting started, download, run and develop. Click on that first link, use Quick Start, and you end up on this page. And on this page there are four downloads. These are starting points for creating your own applications on Jet. So once you've accepted the license, you select one of these and download it. So I've taken that first one, 
So this first one is the base distribution. This is pure JavaScript and CSS and HTML. By the way, this whole story is purely a front-end story. If you're going to ask, you know, which server can we deploy to? No server. It's purely a front-end JavaScript story. Um, okay, so I click on this. I've downloaded it. I've unzipped it, and here it is open. And this is what I see. Um, so this is simply a zip file, no changes to it. I can see there's CSS in here, there's JavaScript, and you can see here um, crossroads for routing, hammer for touch, uh, jQuery, and you can see knockout, and you can see require, and you see OJ and OJ's Oracle Jet, and in here is a long list of Oracle Jet components. These are jQuery UI components at this stage. So um, one of these applications um, looks like this. So this is basically the reference implementation of a Jet application. It's the uh, Work Better app, and if we change the resolution, you will see that everything fits together neatly, and you have the sidebar thing here with the side menu. These are all JET components. Um, we look in the uh, cookbook, so now I've clicked on this Use Cookbook link. We end up here, and here are all the components defined, and for example, the data visualizations. Now, what's nice about the cookbook is that each of the, um, each of the components that you see here consists of a JavaScript side and an HTML side, which is pure knockout. These are knockout components expressed um, as uh, require modules. So here is the HTML and here is the JavaScript, okay? So this is kind of a JS fiddle. I'm in here, I can change something. So you can see here that first, um, the first bar is at 42. So I can change it here to 10 or change any of the code and say apply changes. And then immediately the, uh, the chart is updated live in the browser. Once you're happy with this, you can, you can copy and paste this into your application. So here is the application. It has these libraries. It has a main JS file, which is pure require. So if you're familiar with require, you will recognize this. This is a require configuration file providing the entry point into the application. Any require um, modular application has a require block as an entry point and multiple define blocks define, defining each of the modules. So here is simply a require block as you would have in any application using require. And we have the modules that require should load. So there's a long list of, um, of JET components, but only those that we have specified as being required are the ones that are loaded. So here, um, here we have OJS module, so we can create a modular application. So what does a modular application mean? I will create an empty module. So here I type home, and we have here a home JS and a home HTML. Jet uses convention over configuration. Once we refer to our home module, which I can do here, so here is, here is my reference to my home module, this is the way, uh, there's a data bind here, this is how knockout works. So this is knockout syntax, expressing that Jet should look in the view models folder for a file called home.js, and in the views folder for a file called home HTML. And together, that is a Jet module. But a Jet module is simply a require module. You can see here, a define block, and these are the modules being loaded. And now we can go into the cookbook, and we can cut and paste. So here is our <coughs> HTML, and I'll, I'll copy it from here, and I'll paste it into the home HTML. Well, let's first actually see um, the home HTML working. So it says home, so hello from home. And we've referenced it in a, inside of the index file. And I run the application, and in the browser, I see hello from home. OK, so it's all working. So now I go in here, and I paste that HTML that I copied from the cookbook. You can see that we're referencing a whole bunch of things, um, a whole <coughs> bunch of properties and values and variables here. Um, and you can see that there's a problem here in the output window. And that's because we haven't used the, um, the JavaScript side of our code. So if we go back. To. So here's the HTML, and here's the JavaScript. Now you can see here in the cookbook, we have a require block. And in our own code, we have a define block. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you're copying and pasting, that you don't literally copy the whole thing. But this is, these are the variables that are referenced on the HTML side. We paste them in here, and we must make sure to load the correct components that we need. So we, we want a chart. So here is OJS chart, and we include the chart in here. And so these are the components that will be loaded by require. And now we go into the browser, and we see a chart. Now, how much work was that? Like nothing, you know? And this is exactly how you work with Jet. Um, you, you build up pages, and there's all kinds of different components that are part of Jet. So you can see there's a data collection, so grids and tables, there's data visualization, um, like all these maps and charts and so on. There's layout that's built in, there's menu bars, 
Um, there are many um, typical features and also patterns, like there's a routing solution built in here, there's validation built in, all of the basic features you need for creating an, an enterprise type application uh, in JavaScript. Um, now, how much time do we have? Like nothing. Uh, okay, like one minute. So that's the story. Um, and JET follows all kinds of standards to the extent that there are standards in the JavaScript world. We follow all of them, um, especially the ones related, related to accessibility. And this is how many um, applications within Oracle are being developed nowadays, uh, which has many advantages uh, to the extent that, you know, of course, it's not Java, it's JavaScript. Um, you could, of course, use Java on the back end. So you would have REST APIs exposing your, your data and you could consume them using standard jQuery calls, uh, Ajax calls, JSON calls um, to those REST APIs to in integrate them into your application. So JET is um, aimed at medium to advanced JavaScript developers. It's not really for people who know nothing about JavaScript at all, but basic JavaScript is all that's needed. It's based on open source libraries. Everything that is part of it, except for the components themselves, are open source today. Those components are going to be open sourced very soon. Um, and it, from Oracle's point of view, it's, it's very nice for, for onboarding people quickly into creating cloud applications. Um, because also it's enterprise ready, it has all of these kinds of different features um, that, that are built in so that you don't have to do that over and over again. But you can start working on your business logic immediately. And so it will be available soon. And that's the story of Oracle Jet. Are there any questions? <laughs> Forget to go here um, to find all the information, but our questions um, come down here and, and we'll chat. Thank you very much for coming.